Today, we show you how to use the wrong filters, faff with some espresso tools for pour over, and complicate your workflow, all just add a little bit of extra magic to your cup of coffee. Before we get started, we bought this brewer with our own money. We've also been using it regularly for two years or so, which is plenty of time to get intimate and really understand how to get the best results out of it. So that's exactly what we'll be looking at today and we may as well review it while we're at it. Why the hell not? The fellow Stag X has been around for a while now, but for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a flat bottom pour over brewer made of metal, much like the Kalida Wave, but has a trick up its sleeve that gives it some real edge. We'll get to that in a second. So while this dripper performs pretty well in its stock form, it can be really great and possibly one of our favorites with a few tweaks. So let's dive right in. Starting with design, this thing is really well made and has all the characteristics of a well thought out product, which isn't surprising considering it's made by Fellow. It sports a matte black powder coated finish that has a really nice satisfying sandpapery texture to it that makes it very enjoyable to handle. Like we just mentioned, the Stag X is very similar to the Kalita, but the moment you hold it, you notice a few important differences. The first and most obvious one is that the walls are quite thick. And this is because it's double walled and vacuum insulated, so you get higher and more stable brew temperatures. Just this one difference gives it a significant edge over a lot of other drippers. It also has steeper walls, which means a taller water column, which again aids in keeping temperatures higher. It has a nice silicone base, but we really wish it extended out further. While it sits fairly well on Fellow's tasting glasses, it wobbles and tilts on most other carafes and cups, making it frustratingly hard to keep level. So like any normal person would do, we got a custom milled stainless steel ring made just to fix the issue. Simple. And lastly, we have the filter. The Stag X sports 10 holes with a fancy bump pattern compared to the measly three on the Kalida wave. This definitely helps mitigate clogging, but doesn't quite eliminate it. This brewer ships with wavy filters that are near identical to the Kalida ones. In fact, the 185 wave filters fit perfectly in the Stag and they're cheaper. I mean, these filters work okay, but we got rid of them because we use these conical V60 ones instead. If you're a bit confused, don't worry. We'll explain why a little later on. You get a really nice cup to weigh out the beans and we actually use this every single day for every brew, no matter what we're brewing with. It's great. It doubles as a drip tray, although we rarely ever use it that way. And it also features three dots, which they call a ratio aid, fancy name. Now, volumetric measurements are deeply flawed for many reasons, especially when it comes to something like coffee, where volume can vary quite dramatically depending on the bean density and roast level. In a pinch, you could roughly measure out your dose using these three dots if you brew the same coffee regularly, but for everything else, it's quite inaccurate. And lastly, you get this funnel, which does feel a bit lighter and cheaper than the rest of the brewer, and the edges are a tad sharp. Even the sound it makes when you pull it out is kind of like nails on a chalkboard. But what it lacks in heft and polish, it more than makes up in functionality. It fits most hand grinders and makes it really easy to get the beans in. You can place it above the Stag X brewer to funnel grounds in without making a mess. It fits pretty decently onto the opening of the EKG kettle, which allows us to steam preheat things like the flares brew chamber and porter filter. We also use it to funnel grounds into the Pico Presso's basket as the stock dosing funnel isn't that tall or flared. I mean, we even use it to feed our daughter. Just kidding, but I'm sure it'll do a great job at that too. It's pretty nuts how often we find a use for this nifty little tool that we initially didn't really pay much attention to. Okay, let's quickly talk about temperature because it's important when it comes to this product. The Stag X is double walled and vacuum insulated. So in spite of being made out of stainless steel, it's able to perform similarly, if not better than plastic in terms of thermal stability. We absolutely love this because we're generally not big fans of using plastic, especially when hot liquids are involved and I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. So to test this, we came up with a rather elegant setup to log heat dissipation over time with the plastic V60 and the Stag X. 
Both brewers were preheated and as you can see from the graph, they performed very similarly. We also went a step further by giving both brewers a more generous preheat and here the stag pulled ahead by a degree or so, while the V60 didn't really benefit from additional preheating. This is really exciting and is why we're able to achieve higher extractions with this brewer, provided it's used properly. So we're going to show you how we managed to consistently get excellent results. Cool. So let me show you how we use the Stag X and then we can talk about why we're doing what we're doing because some of these steps may surprise you. Firstly, and most importantly, if you haven't already done this, please hit the subscribe button. We're getting close to the 10K mark, which is very exciting and we have a killer giveaway planned. Cool. So once that's done, as always, fire up the kettle. Then get the conical filter to somehow fit into the flat bottom brewer. By the power of editing, boom. The filter is in place. I get it. This seems like a square peg in a round hole situation, but I promise you it's worth it. And I'll explain right after we finish brewing. Weigh and grind 15 grams of coffee a little finer than you would for a V60. Quick tip, the lower the dose, the higher the chances of channeling. So if you are having trouble getting a flat bed and balanced cups of coffee, then try upping the dose a bit to 20 grams. We've had great results with 15, so we'll just stick with that here. Then preheat the stag eggs. If you are brewing a very light roast, then you can do two rounds of preheating. Or steam preheat, which is a lot quicker and more efficient. If you own the EKG kettle, then this sits nicely on top. Dump the grounds in and give it a quick WDT to level the bed. Then pour 45 grams in very aggressively in about four or five seconds. Then use the WDT again to stir and help all the grounds get wet as soon as possible. Yes, we're doing a wet WDT. Again, I'll explain why. Wait till the timer hits 45 seconds, then pour another 115 grams of water over the next 20 seconds to hit 160 grams on the scale. Then give it two or three gentle swirls to settle the bed. Here you want a moderately aggressive pour to create some agitation, so play with the kettle height and movement to achieve this. Then wait till the timer reads 135 and do the last pour of 95 grams over 20 seconds to reach a total weight of 255 grams of water. Again, give it a couple of gentle swirls to settle the bed. This time, however, you want to bring the kettle lower and closer to the brewer for a gentler pour with less agitation. Then wait for the drawdown, which should take around four or five minutes depending on the coffee and voila, you should have a really good balanced cup of coffee that's very well extracted. Okay, so that was a few extra steps for sure, but trust me, it's worth it. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have questions, so hopefully this explanation that I'm about to give answers most, if not all of them. Firstly, the filter paper. Before I show you how to easily get the conical filter to fit, let's talk about why we're doing this in the first place. The main reason is bypass. For those of you who don't know what bypass is, as the name suggests, it's when your brew water partially or fully bypasses the bed of coffee and goes straight into the carafe or the cup. On a V60, this can happen when some of the water flows through the gap between the paper filter and the walls created by the internal ribs. This is, of course, not ideal because the water barely, if at all, contributes to the extraction process. Similarly, the waves on the fellow filter are a lot more prone to partial and even full bypass. So using a conical filter and making it adhere to the walls dramatically reduces bypass and gives you higher extractions. Cool. So you're probably thinking that's all well and good, but it's impossible to get these conical filters to sit right. I've got you covered. The technique basically involves three simple folds, a quick blast of water and a little massaging. Bet you never thought you'd hear that phrase for brewing coffee. Anyway, start by folding the crimped side as you normally would with these filters. This is not one of the three folds. The first fold is the triangle at the bottom. Try and get the base of this triangle to be approximately the diameter of the flat bottom of the brewer. Folds two and three are as follows and go in opposite directions. Then place it inside the brewer, open it out a little and blast it with water from a tap. As the water drains, slowly massage the paper into place and flatten any folds. That's it. It's not super pretty, but works really well and with a little bit of practice, becomes quite easy to do. Okay, moving on. The other rather unconventional thing that we did was the wet WDT. We've been playing with this for a while and have had really interesting results. 
In fact, Barista Hustle recently posted a blog article about this using the Tricolor to do their testing. They call it the wet weiss and found that it allows for the most efficient bloom and extraction by eliminating any dry patches in the grounds very quickly without causing a massive increase in the brew time. Unlike swirling too aggressively or stirring the slurry, wet WDT only causes a small bump in brew time while also giving you a significant bump in extraction. The folks at BH got a whopping 1.67% increase in extraction yield and to quote them, they also found the brews to have more sweetness, more depth of flavor and a cleaner finish. Our experience has been quite similar, so we highly encourage you to try this recipe that we just showed you with and without the wet WDT step and compare. You'll be surprised. Lastly, if you noticed, each pour was progressively gentler and this was very intentional. In our testing, we noticed that we were able to get a nice flat bed more consistently and this also translated to higher and more even extractions. We also found that it reduces the chances of brews stalling. Okay, let's quickly look at who this brewer is for before wrapping this one up. If you enjoy pour overs, then it's hard not to recommend the Stag X, especially if you're a Kalida person, as this essentially solves most of the issues that the Wave has. At 60 US dollars, it's one of the more expensive drippers, but it's really well built, brings something new and unique to the table, and the results in the cup are excellent, provided you use it right. And you get some really nice accessories too. So on that note, it's time to wrap this one up. We really hope you give this technique a try, and if you do, we'd love to hear how you got on. Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and brew our arms say.